Hi, I'm Brandy McDonald, arts and entertainment writer for The Oklahoman and Oklahoman.com. We have some special guests in our studio today. We have Melody Garneau and Richard Janes. They're with the new Green Pasture Studio. And Tava Sofsky, our frequent guest with the Film and Music Office, have gathered here today to speak with us about the new Green Pasture Studio project, which is a very exciting project. And I think I'll let Tava start about how this kind of got started a little bit, and then you can kick it around like the proverbial soccer ball. Sure. Absolutely. Happy to, uh, to bring everybody up to speed if you haven't been paying attention. Uh, the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, we're a division under tourism, and our, um, one of the big initiatives that we administer in our office is a rebate program which uh, reset in 2014 for a 10-year period, and that um, longevity of the program was really put in place very strategically by um, state legislators and my former predecessors um, to attract television. Uh, you know, having a multi-year TV series kind of speaks um, volumes because it um, says that we've got longer term jobs year after year after year and um, we're just the perfect state and uh, positioned well for a big series. So cut to in early 2016, we did have a big television series that um, was called American Gods and they were circling Oklahoma, scouting Oklahoma, really, really wanted to come here to film, um, not only because of our beautiful and diverse practical locations, but um, they also, you know, they knew that they could get a great um, value for filming here. Um, comparatively speaking um, and they wanted to stay in the states versus going to Canada because um, Canada also has some great incentives so um, I basically hit the pavement um, as oftentimes we do when a production says we're looking for this this or this um, then our office our team kind of you know um, goes to work and we reach out to various communities around the state looking for whatever they're needing and at the time not only did they need um, incentives they needed uh, a soundstage and I was looking in downtown Oklahoma City uh, so again, back in 2017, and this young woman here to my right um, uh, served me some coffee uh, and uh, down at the Paramount Cafe, and she said, what are you doing out this early? And I told her we were looking for a soundstage, and she said, well, let's just build it right here on my lot at the Paramount building down on Historic Film Row. And that was one of the early seeds that um, I've been uh, proud and our team's been proud to watch really grow over the years to kind of get to this point where we are. There's been so much work. We've had incredible um, state support and just community support around. Um, and we're just, so that's really, you know, where, where we are um, or why we are here now is because you know, there's people like Mel and Richard and so, so many others that are really stepping up and they're wanting to, to play in the same arena with, um, with the film industry. So American Gods did a little bit of filming here, but they did not they settle did. here as their, like, home base. That's right. And That's right. that need for a soundstage has led us to the Green Pastures situation. And um, one of you guys, please talk about how that um, has all come about because I think mm -hmm. we're close to getting a key to that. So Yeah. Well, that's true. Um, and... So I got an interest in the film business as far as, um, I, it's not something I started in. And so uh, with Teva, and we began a friendship and then she became, te the uh, travel office became tenants of ours in the building and so forth. And I met a lot of people in the independent film and student filmmakers and so forth who really wanted, they, they needed a place to further, you know, keep up with the changes in the film industry and technology and all of that. And um, so that they could stay in Oklahoma instead of having to go wherever the films were, let's bring some of those here. And, you know, it was moving, but not very well. Not, we weren't getting a lot of progress in that department. Now we were in the legislation. That was, that was working well, uh, some of the legislators and table who worked so hard at it. But then Richard James appeared out of nowhere, like a lightning bolt from the blue, from, an, from the British blue. And, um, a hero's entrance, yes, if we were filming this. Da, da. My goodness, what a build up. I know, you have to say something really <laughs> great. Um, and he and his wife have been in the film industry, um, um, filmmakers, uh, I guess Richard, did you star in some as well? And I did a few. He, he, he's done a few. <laughs> and so um, we, we, they were the first people outside of Teva who's been in the business that said, well, that's, we can do that. That's not going to be, let's try it, let's do it, let's go. And so here we are. Well, I think one of the things is that 
it's not just Oklahoma that needs a soundstage. Mm -hmm. When you look at the streaming wars that are going on, you've got all of these networks like uh, Netflix, like Amazon, who are committing millions and millions, in some cases billions of dollars more to produce content. Because historically, we'd all log on to Netflix or Amazon. Mm -hmm. You'd have this huge choice of stuff to watch. And now, Disney is saying, we've got our own platform. So they're pulling everything off Netflix. And CBS is doing the same. And all the people that would usually supply content to Netflix are now having their own streaming service. So CBS is turning around to you and saying, hey, pay $8.99 a month to watch stuff with us. Well, you can't just pay $8.99 and just watch what CBS has historically made. They need to make a lot more. Mm -hmm. And what that, what that means is that North America, all the sound stages across North America are now booked up. So if you want to shoot in a soundstage, you're looking two years out now. So it's not just Oklahoma. And I think that's what gets really exciting for what we're looking at, is the opportunity for serious economic impact with a lot of these productions. And yes, a lot of people just think about Hollywood, but Hollywood doesn't own the entertainment industry anymore as much as it did. You've got Silicon Valley, you've got places in New York, you've got places from all over the country who we're dead center of America, so it means it's very easy to travel to. Um, and it's a lot of the reasons that initially brought Amy and I to move to Oklahoma in the first place. We've been here for 18 months and we spent two years traveling America looking for a city to move to an estate that we could fall in love with. And we toured everywhere and eventually ended up here by accident at a friend saying, come and have a look. And within 24 hours, myself, my wife, and my two kids all said, this is it. And we've fallen in love. And then seeing every, all the work that everyone's been doing in the film industry here mm -hmm. and the demand that is now needed and the billions of dollars being invested, we just saw that if we could all work together, we could capture some of that billions of dollars for Oklahoma and create a really, really strong industry. And that's really where the start for me was saying, oh, you guys are looking for a soundstage? I've got some experience having worked with Disney, worked with Sony on what sort of things we might need in this instance. And then came Green Pastures School. Right. Which was really by accident that we came upon, I mean, literally uh, a, a friend uh, of all of ours, and he, he was at a wedding with the person that's with the public schools and said, well, you know, we're closed these schools and so forth. And we went to look and it, it's just a perfect spot because it's got a uh, concrete tilt up wall stage already in the gymnasium, which is tor tornado proof. So the sound is pretty good as, as far as filming in there. We'll have to add some, of course, there's some remodeling we have to do, but we start there and we don't, we're not looking for the $200 million Avengers movie necessarily because we, we couldn't do it. But we can start, and we can start with smaller and TV series, which is something we really want because you know they're going to come back. And, and as Richard points out, all these people are on streaming services now, so they need the content. And we have the locations and a great uh, work crew and film office that's going to really support it. And the legislation is actually... It's getting there, we're moving slow, but sure. Mm -hmm. So even in Centum, you have um, some great natural resources that we've talked about a lot, Tavo, as far as um, a lot of different types of places to film yeah. in a pretty tight um, area, as far as Oklahoma mm -hmm. is concerned. And this soundstage, I guess, then is sort of the next piece to that. It's definitely another, um, another giant step um, in growing the industry as a whole. You know, there's always um, room to grow our workforce, and we're, you know, in a time right now in the state where um, our state leadership's always looking to diversify. I think they always have, but now probably more than ever diversify that workforce. And, you know, one thing that I know they're excited to do is, is be able to identify. So if we have a particular project that comes through and they're looking for 60 um, you know, uh, construction workers, they can go to one of the tech schools or they can go, you know, just put a call out and reach out to, maybe there's already a lot of skilled construction workers that are out there that maybe are laid off or what have you, and they can just be cross-trained and then feed right into the industry. So um, just the training opportunities that um, they'll talk about um, as we move along at the film academy, the training academy, the possibilities are endless. and. I mean, we love that because we just want to continue to grow. And um, I just want to shout out to all the people that have been here. Like, 
the fact that we've got new blood ca coming in and um, and then the people that have stuck out Oklahoma and has, has stayed and worked year after year and um, even maybe when there were seasons where there weren't as as much film production activity, you know they've um, they've stayed, and I think that that's really important. Um, so we can just continue to grow upon our really solid foundation that we already have. I think that's really important to make sure it's clear because I know a lot of there's been so much discussion over this last mm -hmm. two weeks as soon as we announced the studio. We do have a phenomenally talented crew base here already. We really do. And you look at the projects that they're working on, they match any big Hollywood production if you went to Los Angeles, the type of crew that we have here. Mm -hmm. We just need more of them. Mm -hmm. um, and by increasing it so we have bigger crew depth, which means that if, you're, if I'm a producer and you're a producer and you're a producer and you're a producer, we're all going to need different crew. So at the moment, uh, we have a depth that can service a certain number of productions, but we need that to be deeper. And the more productions we have in, the more stability that gives for the current workforce and the workforce that we're growing. I think that that's an important point is that I think a lot of people aren't aware. They may hear of, you know, if a Matt Damon name gets thrown out or if Jesse Eisenberg shows up into town, they, they sort of are aware of it. But people are not aware of the amount of filming that's going on mm -hmm. on a regular basis here, that the industry here really is something that's been steadily growing. Yeah, I mean, last summer we had a record high of seven films going on simultaneously, and then the same thing happened again in the in the late fall and the winter with seven productions going on simultaneously. So our crews are just rolling over. They're I think they're happy to be working, um, but in and it is it's um, it's a collaborative team effort. You know, the schools that do have film programs, including I mean, there's there's multiple. Um, a, a lot of the career programs have film specific programs and OCCC and OU. These, those students will have another opportunity to, um, to segue and go through the Film and TV Academy, which I know we've been talking a lot about the workforce and growing the crew, um, but that will, maybe I don't want to steal the show, but that is also one of the m very, very important pieces under a Green Pasture Studio. Well, and it, it turned out to be fortuitous that um, a school right. was available because yeah, it's that, part right. of it is yeah. that it's going yeah. to be a school, I guess. Exactly. Right. And, yeah. we, and, that, and that is really exciting because mm -hmm. um, people, there are a lot of career tech places here in Oklahoma and, and, and uh, programs of sorts. So every production, it doesn't make any difference if it's a million dollars or $150 million, needs a certain set of people, right? They need people that can do lighting and sound and whatever, and they need bookkeepers and they need what have you. So our goal is those folks because they already are people who are interested in their particular field, but maybe they want one extra thing, perhaps if they're coming out of the military or you know, maybe they're retiring, whatever. So if they're a carpenter, they can learn about set carpentry or if they're in accounting, they can learn about film accounting, which is a little different, but it's not, you know, three years more of study. It's something they're sort of familiar with anyway. So those are the folks that we can get spread out more, we can have more of them, and if we're doing seven films at a time, we have enough people, and they don't have to bring them in from somewhere else and pay those folks to do a job that we have people for here, and we're really excited about that, especially mm -hmm. that neighborhood. Northeast part of town, It's the community wants to grow, wants a new, industries and businesses and I think that's going to be a good location for us. And this happens with every every center across America or even the world where you start to have a lot of film production. Initially they have to bring people in, right, because they don't have that skill base and then very quickly a number of things start to happen. You get people living there realizing I'm a carpenter or I've been doing hair or I've been doing makeup or accounts and I can now get trained. So the program that we've put in place is to very quickly take those people so that they are set ready on the day one that they land and they're working on a set. And bear in mind, a lot of these productions, they pay very well as well, right? These aren't very low entry, entry level positions that you're going to stay at and not earn a great deal of money. Once you get in, you start working your way up, you can earn very, very good money. Um, so the key is to get those people in and then you start to see people really understand that Oklahoma is a big film base. And the best example for this is Georgia, right? Georgia has exploded as a film location. Do we want to be the next Georgia? I would argue no, because there is an element where what they're doing is they're going after the big blockbusters, like we spoke about a moment ago. 
Whereas because of the streaming wars, there's a lot of more of the five to eight million dollar per episode TV shows, which are a lot less risky for a network to program, which means that they can run longer. And the longer that we have productions running here, the better, because the bigger impact that has on local communities. And we're not just talking about Oklahoma City, we're talking about Oklahoma as a state. If you look at uh, a show like The Walking Dead, um, produced by Gail Ann Hurd, it's now been running for eight seasons. The great thing about that is that they can kill off people fairly easily because they have multiple casts, but also because it costs about four to five million dollars per show compared to a Game of Thrones, which is a 12 to 15 million dollars per show. So you've seen um, a show like that go into an area of Georgia where it was a small town. All the shops had shut down on Main Street. There was one shop that was still open that was a mum and pop store that was, they said, look, we own the building. We're going to stay here. There's nothing else for us to do, but we have no business. And within a few years, that community had exploded. So the investment that can go on throughout Oklahoma with the growing of the film and TV industry here is absolutely massive and impacts everyone. They had to build a second Main Street in Sonoy, Georgia. Wow. And they just, um, it took a few years, but now they've got like hotels. I mean, they, restaurants popped up like overnight. Of course. But now they've got hotels and more hotels um, popping up in that. Tim and I mm -hmm. and a couple of our legislators went a couple of years ago. Uh, well, year before, I don't know what year it is. Whatever it was, another year. And um, we went to the town. And absolutely amazing. It's mm -hmm. just the industry that cropped up around this film, mm -hmm. even, I mean, this series, even when that's done, people will want to visit that town because they're gonna wanna take a picture in front of whatever, the zombie something. And the same is true anywhere else. People mm -hmm. still go to places where movies were filmed and mm -hmm. all of that. So small towns in Oklahoma will really, I think, do well in, in when they bring in these different films and TV shows and so forth. So we're really excited about that. I mean, in the uh, rural areas up in the northeast of Oklahoma, and of course we have wonderful landscapes and outdoor shots for everybody. So we're really looking forward to the whole thing. So let's talk about the timeline because you guys have purchased the, the school. Yep. And that's that's been done. Well, so we're, let's, we're, we're in the middle of paperwork. Anyone that's ever bought a home knows that that paperwork takes a little longer than you mm -hmm. anticipate. So we're sure. just finishing that off at the moment. So tell us a little bit about the timeline for the soundstage and for the school. Yeah, so we're hoping to be actually operationally in there within the next three weeks, which would mean that classes can start for the Oklahoma Film Academy March 1st. Now, um, we have to do a little bit of work to the space, but the great thing is, is that, and I think hats off to the Oklahoma City Public mm -hmm. School District. They understood not only that they have to maintain this building, and we've all seen buildings that have been let go and they've very, very quickly fallen into disrepair. They made sure that that didn't happen so that it could be used for something that was going to make an impact to that community. Because there isn't a huge amount out in that area and this school was really a central hub. You drive down that post road and there's, I think it's a water tank that has the Panthers logo, home of the Panthers. And so they really made sure that it was maintained. So from our position, we can move in there very quickly. We have a number of the Oklahoma, Oklahoma production companies are gonna base themselves there. We're talking with other universities and colleges about bringing them in so they get that experience, as well as taking the experience that we have out to the Oklahoma schools so that we're educating the Oklahoma youth on where is it going now. So the soundstage that we have at the moment is perfect. It needs a 16 by 16 foot hole knocked in it so we can drive a truck in it. Um, it needs a, a light, a sound and bell and pads over the walls so that the reflection uh, means that we can actually record sound effectively. But it's pretty darn perfect. Mm -hmm. And our hope is we're in discussions at the moment for end of March, our first uh, movie to be in there, which is a movie that is a sequel to a, to a movie that everyone watching this will know. <laughs> so uh, I can't say much more than that, but we're going to be in there very, very quickly. And when you look at things like Martin Scorsese is uh, obviously in town, there's been lots of news about that. Um, and they're going to need crew. So the way that we've set up the Oklahoma Film and TV Academy is that it's three tracks. It's uh, three hours on a Saturday, three hours on a Sunday, four for four weeks. That gets you through track one, which is 
Film 101. I'm ready to go on set. And that'll teach you some of the basics, like what does one bell mean versus two bells on a soundstage? Um, what are some of the things you have to be aware of when working on a union crew? Uh, what is the paperwork that you have to finish at the end of a shoot? Um, as an individual employee because we've had productions and this happens all across America where you have a new crew and just filling in that paperwork slows down everyone getting paid and slows down production. So we take everyone through that for Film 101. Uh, the next month if someone wants to continue with us is the specialization and really that's for those people who have been carpenters, electricians, makeup artists, bookkeepers and they have a transferable skill but again they can do that of a weekend or they can do that on, on Tuesday and Thursday nights with us. Because the key is that we want to take people who are really excited, but we don't want them to have to say, I have to put my life on hold. We can get you trained up so you can start working, filling these roles that are available right now within the space of four weeks at a base entry level, another four weeks if you're going to a specialization, and then another four weeks if you actually want that real hands-on crew experience. So, and what has been the response so far since you guys announced just a few weeks ago that this was up and running? Well, Richard's a star now. Oh <laughs> I think that was bound was to happen. Star before I think all of them. I think everyone is. I think, yeah. I think that's what I know Mel and I have been doing a lot of press. And I think it's really important to say that really this is an entire industry group effort that's been going on here. Absolutely. Whilst we're pretty enough, we're pretty lucky enough to be, not pretty And enough, pretty. Uh, we're pretty. You, you're pretty. Uh, to be I feel pretty. a spokesperson, that's really what we are because mm -hmm. you've got casting directors like Ricky Masler. You've got uh, Alison Nafee from uh, who does all the locations in town. Um, you've got so many people coming together to support and doing their bit to make this happen. The guys down at Castle Row Music Studios. Um, so there's, there's a ton of people who've come together to really make this happen. And, and that's why it's been able to move so quickly because of the inertia. And I think it's worth saying that when you've got to look at really who's enabling this to go forward and dare I say who could hold it back if certain things weren't talked about properly is the state legislation and everything that we've seen so far with what the representatives are doing they understand that for every dollar that is actually spent in the state of Oklahoma on film and television Georgia put it at a Five, three and a half. Three and a half percent return in terms of economic impact. Three and a half times. Three and a half times. Yeah. So when you look at that, mm -hmm. that's a very, very, very good place to put your dollars. Mm -hmm. If you're getting 3.5% return, 3.5 return. Um, mm -hmm. So legislation has to support this continued growth, mm -hmm. which is going to bring more funding and more jobs to Oklahoma. And we're going into a legislative session right now where there will be discussions around that and around what is needed to capture this billions of dollars that has not been earmarked for a state to spend, to spend in a state yet, such as Netflix's money, such as these new platforms that are coming out from Jeffrey Katzenberg and what have you. So what, what has the response been as far as signing up for the, uh, for the academy? Because I think you've had some people who've already signed up. We have. Week one, we had 70 applicants, which is just fantastic. And I look at the breadth of experience, um, and we've had some remarkable people uh, find emails, email us why they should be accepted, um, mm -hmm. and that's a real hats off. I know you've mm -hmm. had people phoning your office, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we've had people, um, interested students, interested instructors. Um, what else have we had? Um, I mean, media has called us as well. Um, and then even some of our existing crew, you know, they've called and if they've been, I'll just blame it on, they've been so busy working <laughs> that they haven't looked up or they haven't heard about what is going on over here with Green Pastures, is that they're asking, you know, well, I want to be a part of this as well. And so I think, um, you know, Richard pointed out earlier that, I mean, everyone's invited to, to, to play in the sandbox yeah. and, you, you know, know, it was very, uh, Richard's wife, Amy, who is our third partner not here right now she got out of this somehow or other <laughs> but she um, it, her she's very big on the education mm -hmm. especially of the younger people middle yeah. school high school age and and we are very keen on that as well and also on making sure that we do diversify help to diversify Oklahoma's uh, economy and folks who are in the film business and toward that end we made sure this was very affordable that you don't have to go out and take a you know forty thousand dollar student loan to pay 
to go to this. It's not something like that at all. It's something, you, and you could do it and still have a job. So if you're still working mm -hmm. on something else, you can go to the academy or go um, to any one of those, in fact, all of those levels. And we're very happy about that, but also that uh, outreach to public, to the, not just Oklahoma City Public Schools, but all the schools. And uh, Amy is working very hard on those things and on making sure, making partnerships with the mm -hmm. schools and, you know, finding ways to go out to the really, really, this is hard to say, really rural. Really mm -hmm. rural. Anyway, those things that aren't in the city uh, uh, communities so that, you know, those kids have a chance too because right. it's not like they can just mm -hmm. drive here to, you know, a three hour drive to come to Oklahoma City. So it's going to be statewide. So I, I where mean, would you like to see this go like in a year from now? I mean, where, what are your hopes um, for what would happen if sort of the conditions turn out to be right and you get the, the support that you need? I love that question. So if the conditions are right, and I know what the conditions are as well, right? Mm -hmm. The conditions at this stage are that uh, the, our representatives uh, continue to support the push in this industry to diversify our economy. Because quite frankly, the demand from filmmakers is there. I mean, we look at just the applications coming through at the moment. They want to spend their money here. They just, just like Boeing does, just like any big industry, they want to know what is the support that the state is going to give them through spending those hundreds of, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of, of dollars in the state. Um, so what does it look like in a year's time? Yeah. Well, we'd be graduating a thousand students from the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy a year and they would be going straight into jobs where within that month to month and a half, they would have been able to repay the cost that it would be to be at the Oklahoma Film TV Academy. To give you an idea on those costs, for Film 101, we have the three units. Film 101 is 1,500 bucks. The next one is 1,500 bucks. The next one is 1,500 bucks. Really, really simple. But we know that the jobs, that the, what we're training them for are jobs that are available right now that other people aren't filling. Um, we'd also be looking at them building another soundstage. Whether that would happen at Green Pastures, which we'd love to, but we want to involve the local community in that, or elsewhere in Oklahoma. Um, I think if we look at five years down the line, we're probably looking at five soundstage campuses spread out throughout the state. Uh, and the more that we can nurture and encourage that, the better. Um, if you look at Disney's new show, uh, is it the Man the Stun Mandalorian? New Star Wars? Yes. It looks like it's all been shot outside, but it was all shot on a soundstage with digital backboards, not even green screen. So sound stages are really important. So we'd see a number of sound stages growing, and we'd see an industry here that was really, really growing with some great TV shows that are coming back over and over again and making a difference in the lives of the communities with which they base themselves. And that's what excited me about Green Pastures. It's Everything, everyone who's reached out to us from that community has reached out with open arms. And I, I get emotional with this because it's, it's the same that happened when Amy and I and Finn and Ella, my kids, moved to Oklahoma. And I think it's what makes Oklahoma great, is that people open their arms and they are welcoming. And it is one of the friendliest places that I have been to. And that marks it out wherever you go in Oklahoma, in my opinion. And so the welcoming arms that we've seen, if I look at the next year, the impact that we've had on that community and around Oklahoma will be phenomenal. And we'll all be having an Oscars party next year Don't looking you know at a it. project that came through Oklahoma. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Fun. The, there you go. And, we, uh, um, and, the, and I have to say, following up on that, uh, two things. Well, so the Lieutenant Governor and all of us did a panel or an advisory panel last year to say, you know, what's the feasibility of this sort of thing, and what do, what do people in the industry, what would they need to have to come to Oklahoma, or the people who live here that are in the industry, what do they think it would take? And so we, we worked hard on that, and we put together, uh, we're doing another sort of session here coming up to say, here's the things we've all come up with, and we'll take go to the legislature, uh, since they're coming into session shortly, and say, here's some things that really would make this really go quickly and grow exponentially. So what can we do? And work with them. And some of them have been very, very receptive folks. I mean, the ones we've talked to so far have been very helpful and instrumental in moving things along. So I can't thank them enough. And, and even in the public schools, as uh, Richard pointed out, the school board and everyone on it has been 
how can we help you? How can we make this happen faster? And so, so it's been unbelievably, we're very fortunate that it's in Oklahoma, because otherwise I don't know how much um, access we would have to all these people to get things done. So. It's very different in Los Angeles where I moved from, I have to say, right? I, th I think one of the, we talk about people saying, how can I help? And there are, there are really two ways that people can help with what's going on right now, as far as the studio and as far as then the Film Academy. One, anyone who you know who loves films and has always had that little bit in the back of their head, let them know what we're doing, get them to apply, and we can have a chat with them. So they do that by going to uh, www.oklahomafilmandtvacademy.com. So they can go there and they can just sign up and then someone will reach back out to them. The other thing that we're doing, because of this outpouring of what can I do to help, we've got a big building that, quite frankly, at the moment, we're taking a bit of a punt on making sure that the industry is going to come here. So one of the things we're going to be doing is putting together things like painting parties and stuff like that to paint the building to get it ready. Um, and so we've had a lot of people reaching out saying, can I get involved? And we looked at it and said, well, let's just make this a community group where we can all come together and do this. So if anyone wants to do that, you can go to thegreenpasturesstudio.com and just register there for more information and we'll let you know more about when we're doing the painting parties, when we're gonna do sort of screening parties around the Oscars and anyone who wants to get involved, come and get involved because this is so much fun. <laughs> well, thanks so wow. much. I really, <laughs> boy, I think we God, Richard's probably. Richard's always so happy. <laughs> He's gonna keep it's him around the office, I think. It's because uh, I moved to Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah. that's what it oh, is. Stop it. <laughs> Well, we're, we're so appreciative for you guys for coming in, giving us an update on what's going on right now, and um, I'm sure you guys are going to be back to, to keep us um, updated moving forward because it sounds like some really big things are in store. But um, you guys can, of course, follow along with our coverage at oklahoman and oklahoman.com, and we'll keep you up to date on what's going on.